Welcome. My name is Al Rodenberg, and this is a new series of video podcasts introducing entrepreneurs and business owners from all over the world. Today, I will be visiting with Chu Chen. Help me out with the pronunciation. Chu. 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 Yeah. You want to try again? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just want to make sure I got it right. Siju. Okay. Yeah, Siju. Mm -hmm. Siju lives in a beautiful Seattle, Washington, lives in beautiful Seattle, Washington, excuse me, with her lovely Bishan dog. After living in the U.S. for the past 15 years or more, she discovered her passion as both a career coach and an interior designer. She calls herself a career coach during the day and a designer by night. Oh, we'll have to learn more about that. <laughs> uh, she feels blessed that she has found a beautiful balance of coaching and designing throughout her week. Siju now is pleased to be able to utilize both of her talents and interests. She loves her life now. She is finally living a life full of joy, abundance, and freedom. She wakes up every day feeling excited and goes to bed satisfied. She believes no one is here to be miserable. We are here to be the best we can be while doing what we love. Therefore, she is determined to help others find their talents and passion and build a purposeful career that provides total fulfillment, as we all deserve that. Well, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, I said you've lived in the United States for over 15 years. Uh, where, where were you uh, raised? Uh, I was raised originally in China. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Wow. What what brought you to the United States? Uh, my mom uh, immigrated here back in 1994 uh, after she and my dad went separate ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was always thinking about bringing me here at some point. <clears throat> so um, after high school, I studied one more year of art kind of training over there and mm -hmm. came over here straight to art college. Very cool. Start it from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I understand Seattle's a beautiful part of the country, too. I love Seattle. Yeah, yeah. I love the trees over here. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I miss trees. I'm, uh, I've am i been down in the Houston area for 22 years, and I used to live in Chicago. A lot more trees mm -hmm. and things like that up there. Um, so tell us a little bit about, uh, well, my first question is always the same. It's how would your family and friends describe you? Well, well, how would they, what would they say about you, your personality? Uh, I think they describe me for being always positive. Mm -hmm. um, they, because I do always try to see things from a positive light. <clears throat> and they probably will describe me as somebody who cares a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, because that's my, one well, of my superpower is that I care. <laughs> Once I care. Oh, that's I great. It's all going to be okay. Well, that's a wonderful superpower to have. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's my weakness because I care too much. When something about somebody is not resolved, it will really affect me too. Yeah. So sometimes it's just like, oh, I wish I just don't care. But I do care. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's difficult sometimes because not everything goes the way we expect, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So and it's out of our control too. Oh yeah, yeah. I know. I've uh, I've kind of learned the serenity prayer. <laughs> <laughs> um. So as a child, what what did you think you would do or become as as for a profession? That is a very funny question because I don't really believe I ever thought about it. I feel like I would a child that always just want to do the best in that mm -hmm. moment. Like in my elementary school, I want to just get the best grade in the class, attend as much activity I could to just be an excellent student. And that repeated in middle school and repeated in high school. So I never really thought about what I want to do growing up. Except I started in high school to realize my I have a really unique sense of taste and that I care about, you know, whenever I go to places, whether it's restaurants or hotel, or I sit, sit there and I will evaluate how this place 
look like if I like it or don't like it. So mm -hmm. then I know that I will be interested in interior design. That's how I pursued interior design degree. So it's kind of started from there. And there was not like a childhood dream that I had. I didn't have that. I just wanted to be the best because I was, you know, raised to be the best. <laughs> that's awesome. Mm -hmm. No, that's a that's a good thing. Um, so what would you say is your passion in life? What would you, how would you describe? What are you passionate about? My passion is to help people, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like for longest time that my life is never just for me. I feel like I'm here for a reason other than myself. Um, I have not, I don't have a lot of materialistic desires. I don't need a lot to be happy. But when I see people I care about happy because of me, it really kind of um, multiply the happiness, the feeling of happiness. Because I feel useful, purposeful, and I feel like, oh, that's why I'm here. See, I make other people happy, right? So I think my purpose right now is to um, connect to my professional coaching is to help other people find their purpose. Because I feel like we're all here to really be our authentic self. And our purpose is to be our most authentic self. So a lot of people, they've been living life that is not completely being themselves. They li have lived a life that under a lot of should be doing or was told to do rather than this is what they are here to do and what they really want to do and what they can do, be good at. So I think that's what I'm here for is to guide them to reconnect with who they are and just completely be themselves 100%. Hmm. Well, I, you know, I've certainly run into a lot of people that have professions, whether they're attorneys, CPAs, or whatever they're doing, and they're not very happy. They have right. a lot of money, and they have great jobs, but they, you know, when you talk about your authentic self, in other words, who you really are, right? Um, I think that's a challenge for everybody, and it, it takes a while for people to come to the realization that they're, they're not there. And sometimes maybe it's too late. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I think that's wonderful what you're doing. Um, what, what led you to, to helping people from a coaching standpoint? So how did I become a coach? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's, well, I was only doing interior design uh, up until 2020, but the pandemic hit and I was, burned out from the design industry and how demanding it was and how kind of in the corporate American setting that you weren't really treat fairly as a person, but just mm -hmm. as a number or as an asset. So I felt like I didn't want to be treated that way or didn't want to continue to on that path and grow old that way. So I really started, you know, so searching and discover like, what really matters to me. And I ask myself, yeah. like, if I need a reason to get up, what would that reason be? And the answer came to me really quickly is that if somebody needs me, and then I realized that, oh, wow, if somebody needs me, I will have so much basically motivation to get the day started to be there for somebody. But in what sense, right? And then I have to go deeper to understand. And then I realized that I have been kind of casually a life coach to my significant other and one of my best friends for many years. Like every time they couldn't resolve certain choices in their life, they come to me for advice or like they felt bad about certain things and they couldn't kind of get over the feeling. They will kind of come to me to talk through it. So I feel like I naturally have the talent um, that way to be a coach. And then I kind of uh, went on the path of getting certified and kind of started from there. Oh, very nice. Mm -hmm. You said you were burned out in the interior design industry. Um, 
I, yeah. I always pictured interior designers as someone that had this luxurious home and, you know, people would hire them for just huge amount of money and they would design these magnificent homes. It doesn't sound like that's what you expect. That's residential design because I worked in hospitality design. We work in a team um, to design like five-star hotels. Uh, okay. Now I love, I'm still doing interior design, but now I'm designing with my best friend and we design restaurants all over the country. And oh, wow. It's a much better setting because A, she's my best friend. She doesn't boss me around. She jokes about like, she pays me to boss her around. <laughs> but we work collaboratively like a te team. Like we're not competing with each other. Which we're yeah. like, our, one of our big statement is more heart, all magic. Meaning that we really bring our heart to what we do. And then, you know, that's where the magic starts, right? But in the past experience of interior designer, it's the client's kind of expectation is always unreasonable. And then the company is kind of, you know, submit to that kind of unreasonable request. And then we as the workers just kind of have to take all the pressure and load and and you design under such a pressure, you just don't feel like you're naturally being creative. You're just being forced of squeeze some sort of creativity out of you. And which is, it could be so much better if you had more time. Right. So I didn't really want to design under crunch like that anymore. Well, I've been to a lot of hotels and I'll tell you some of the newer ones I've seen. I can tell that they were designed like, yeah, okay, here, here it is. Boom. Yeah. There's no thought to it. And mm -hmm. it's ugly as, well, I can't say it because this will be broadcast, but it's it's mm -hmm. not very appealing. Okay. And then I've been in other hotels where there's just a warm feeling that you get when you walk in and, it, well, it's not home, but you feel very comforted. You feel comfortable walking into it. Yeah. The, the designer difference. has put the heart to it. You can tell when they put their heart yeah. to it yeah. or they kind of just had to do it for the sake of doing it, you know? Right, right. No, that's awesome. And what you described about you and your partner to me reminds me of uh, what, what's the word I'm thinking of? Synchronization, I think. Um, you mean design partner. Uh -huh. Yeah, where you you really work together. Where you know, I, I guess the best description I've ever heard of it that two plus two doesn't equal four. It's more like two plus two equals eight or ten, because mm -hmm. you're you're combining your talents and abilities to create something or, or help in, in such a more, in such a greater space. Right. And you feel super valued. Like she really appreciates me and she pays me well on time. Uh, I never need to kind of remind her of payment. As soon as I send an invoice, it's paid right away. And then um, basically like, She's very gentle with her criticism. She doesn't come across as criticizing. She come across as, what do you think about this? I think this is better. I don't like that. It's never, I never felt like I'm personally being criticized in terms of my ability to design. It's sure. all about preference, what's best for the space. And we can mm -hmm. always come to uh, agreement really uh, easily. Hmm. That's nice. And gracefully, yeah. Yeah, it would be we nice if argue. everybody worked that way, right? When we have like a heated moment, it's not an argument. It's just like, all right, girl, you're too passionate right now. Calm down. You know, <laughs> like I, she would realize that too. Yeah, no, I, I understand what that what that's like. I mean, I used to argue with my mom, right? But but we would talk loud, but we loved each other. We would just have different points of view. And someone would say, don't talk to your mom that way. And I mean, like we're fine. You know, that's just how we communicate sometimes, but it's our point of view and it's, it works out just perfectly. My mother grew up in the Dutch East Indies, which is now Indonesia. So if if you saw my mom next to me, you'd say, no, 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 she's not your mom. Cause I'm six one. Well, I had blonde hair. Now it's gray, <laughs> but you know, she, she was like five, three and had a darker complexion and <laughs> curly brown hair and brown eyes. So I was like, nah. And I'm like, no, no, no she's my mom. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, um, so your coaching, um, you said that you got certified to be coach, uh, life coach. Um, 
who who does that kind of certification? Is that is there like a nationwide or international organization that certifies you to do that? Or I mean, there's plenty of programs, but um, mm -hmm. the coaching industry follows the ICF standard. So I was certified mm -hmm. by ICF uh, credited school mm -hmm. called Life Purpose Institute. Um, so uh, there's multiple certificate and program but it's all yeah. kind of different by, by the international coaching foundation gotcha okay that's great and when you do your coaching um i'm assuming you you do some in person and some by zoom or by phone or something Mostly like that. by zoom i don't really do in person yeah yeah well, i can see where that might be much more <laughs> efficient for sure Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I used to try to meet people in person. And then when COVID happened, it was like, oh, Zoom, that works. Um, it works, give people the freedom and comfort of their own space. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. How um, how are you getting found? How are people finding you to do coaching? Right now, I... I am exposed on all kinds of coaching platforms. I'm on mm -hmm. New Me. I'm on Thumbtack. Um, okay. Sometimes I use Bark to reach out to people. Sure. And then I have Google My Business active. Mm -hmm. People Google, you know, my name or my company name. Sure. They're the company there. I also have Instagram accounts. Mm -hmm. And I'm so active on Facebook. So um, I am so far not actively promoting because my a lot of my effort is on the design set, side. Sure. If uh, a client reach out to me, I'm definitely making myself available to provide the service. That's awesome. So, what do you what do you find to be the greatest challenge in what you do on the on the coaching standpoint? Uh, I think the balance of what is enough. Sometimes you mm -hmm. feel like you need to do more, like mm -hmm. create more courses or make a new program. So there is that part of me always felt like, am I doing enough as a coach? Or am I just... uh? okay to coach clients one-on-one -on -one. and am i really growing as a coach i mm -hmm. think the challenge is to really know is coaching enough or there's more required as a coach hmm. that's an interesting perspective i'm not sure i quite understand that you mean like in addition to what you do, maybe have them take some other courses or something. No, like no, no. Like I need, to, I feel like as a coach, it's not just coaching. Like I have to provide con content and oh, okay. give more value. And instead of just one-on-one -on -one coaching, I right. should have things for them to, you know, count, count on it, like things to build my credibility. Sure. If I somehow eventually will have a book, I feel like that will make me even more a credible coach. Right. But right. I'm not there yet. And I think the challenge is to just like, am I growing enough? Like, am I growing at all? Like, I just sometimes feel like once I had the business started and start coaching clients, I, I feel like unless I make more effort, it could just be like this. And I don't know if I want to just only be uh, stopping at where I am. But then at the same time, I'm passionate for design as well. So like mm -hmm. it demand, demand, demands my time and attention for sure. a design, set, which I do not have to put in how I'm going to expand my coaching business. So I think the challenge is just be like, it's like an internal struggle. Like, am I okay with it not growing right. as fast? Yeah. No, I totally understand. I've started businesses for many, many years, and it's uh, it's difficult where to balance things out and exactly. Well, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. It's uh, it's not always easy. 
And also it's the purpose of the coaching. It's like, am I trying to grow a coaching business so I can be financially free and then to actually have a successful coaching business that makes, they always promote the six figure coach, seven figure coach. Like, is that where I want to be? Right. Or I just want to have a platform to be helpful for people. I think for me, it's more for the latter. I can like, see that. Yeah. I mean, I expect it to make me a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I, I've seen my life evolve in that direction as well. And it's, um, you get a different sense of things. I think it's more fulfilling. Yeah. Really mm -hmm. Um, so what question have I not asked you that you wish I would have asked you? That is such an interesting question. I feel like any question is fine. I don't have more expectations. I like how well, I just thought I'd throw it out there. I, I try to make sure that that we're discussing things that you're wanting to discuss. And if there's things we haven't covered. Yeah, I think you covered uh, quite a bit of key point, like how, well, how I became a coach, mm -hmm. you know, what you think my passion purpose are, you know, and my upbringing. So, yeah, I think okay. you covered well. Okay. And where would we find you online? What is is there a website we can find you at? Yep, it's sccoachinggroup.life. sccoachinggroup.live. Got it. Mm -hmm. L-I-F-E, right. not live. L-I-F-E. Oh, sccoachinggrouplife. Dot life. Oh, dot life. Okay, got it. Yeah, instead of dot, dot com, dot it's life. dot life. All right, got it. Yeah. Well, Siju, I really appreciate you spending the time with us today, and uh, we look forward to talking with you again in the future, and we wish you all the best. Uh, it sounds like you had a fascinating life and a very fulfilling life, so that's wonderful. Yeah, I would say so, and I want this for all my clients to actually be really happy and satisfied, satisfied with their choices of what they do mm -hmm. with their time. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again. All right. Thank you so much.